What I'd like you to do is I would like you to imagine. Imagine that you're a five-year-old who's just met his father and the next thing you know, he's moved to another country. He didn't want to know you. You wasn't good enough. When you go to primary school, you find yourself one of three black children in the class. You're an only child, so you spend most of your time trying to find friends but not quite fitting in. So Cindy and Barbie, Barbie are your best friends. You sit there with a cardigan over your head, flicking the arms over your shoulders because you want long flowing locks just like everybody else in your classroom. Your hair doesn't quite grow that way. Yeah. You're not good enough. At school, you're average and the teacher doesn't identify that you're dyslexic. Only tells your mum one day, not going to amount to much and true to form, you leave school with a handful of qualifications that don't amount to much financial wealth. About 11 or 12, you meet your father again and you now have a brother. You're also entering puberty and you're waiting for those curves to come. <laughs> <laughs> when you get to 17 or 18, you find out you now have a sister, the third time you've met your father, and those curves still haven't arrived. <laughs> so you enter a life of toxic relationships because you're not good enough for anybody to love you. We're talking ghosting, gaslighting, and not to forget the time when your boyfriend gets another woman pregnant. But you don't cry, you just know that you're not good enough. You throw yourself into work, you're great at your job and you love the company you work for. But after five interviews trying to go for five promotions, it's clear you're not good enough for management. So what do you do? You hand in your notice without a job to go to and you start your own business. At the same time, you find out that you're pregnant. Now, what do you do? Well, of course, you have your child whilst building a business, and you find yourself giving to everybody. You're giving to your son, you're giving to your clients, your stakeholders. You end up giving from an empty cup, totally burning out, having to walk away from your business with nothing. As time develops, your child starts going through what you could call some challenging years. You know, the teenage ones. <laughs> A week does not go by when you're not getting called to or called by the school about something or another. You're a bad mother. You're not good enough. You find yourself working in a call centre, taking calls about mist bin collections and mice infestations. <laughs> you haul yourself out of bed on a daily basis, totally depressed, totally lacking self-esteem, and you come home afterwards, cook, maybe eat, and go straight to your bedroom. Because you know what? You're not good enough. You're not good enough as a mother, you're not good enough as a daughter, you're not good enough as an employee, you're not good enough as a business owner, you're not good enough as a friend. Now I'd like you to raise your hand if anybody can relate to any part of the story that I've just told you. Oh, there was a time when I thought that I was alone and I'm sure you were probably gathered that that was my story. That was the person I was about seven years ago. So you're probably wondering, how did I get from 
that person that was filled with limiting beliefs, mm -hmm. self-doubt, and not enough of, to the person standing here today with you fine people on the TED Talk Red Dot. I'll tell you that in a moment, but first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Yvonne Phillip. I'm an international best-selling author, business award winner, success and style and visibility coach with a passionate interest for equality, diversity and inclusion in the workplace and the corporate social responsibility of businesses. Now let's get back to how I got to this place. Now until then, my life had been filled with wanting other people's acceptance. It had been filled with almost an addiction of not feeling good enough and I needed to check myself into rehab. I was on this road and I needed to take the right path. I needed to change my mindset and this recurring theme of not good enough that was going round in my head and slay those dragons so that I could come out as a bigger and better person. I needed to develop a mantra, an affirmation that I could live by that took me from A to Z. So what was that mantra, you're probably wondering? You know you have to own these mantras. You need to go big. So what did I say? I said, I am visible and I am successful. At the time, I was laying on my bed with my big toe sticking out of the hole in my socks, looking down at my fluffy, well, not so fluffy slippers, <laughs> wondering whether I should go and take a shower finally, or press play on the next episode of reality TV that I was currently streaming. My son came into the room and asked to go to a party. And after some due diligence, I let him go on his way. And then it hit me. Okay, he's my only child. He's going to be going to university in three years time. What's gonna happen to me. The separation anxiety hit me like a wrecking ball, totally bowled, my, bowled me over. I wasn't being kind to myself. So I use this mantra to take my step forward. And I break it, I'm going to break it down into three parts for you. Remember, I am visible and successful. The I am part. This was my voyage of discovery. Who was I? Who was Yvonne really? What did I value? What was non-negotiable in my life? What cards that had been handed to me was I willing to accept? Which ones were out of my control? So you know what? It's not worth bothering about. Then we'll go into the visibility side of things. Now, you could probably tell I'm not scared of talking, but I was scared of showing up as my authentic self. So I got the clarity about what did I want in my future? What did I want people to say about me when I walked into a room? And I got clear about my goals moving forward. I also got a little bit more confident about stepping out of my comfort zone and leaning into the desires of what I wanted for my, my future to look like. And then I thought about my credibility because you know what? There was a lot of skills in my arsenal. So I thought, okay, what are my skills, my knowledge, my experiences that I have that I can add to my credibility to build a personal brand? And then we have the success part. Now, I know a lot of you probably are thinking, well, you know, I don't want to be an author. I don't want to be a speaker. I don't want to run a business whilst having a full-time job. Success is different things for different people. But whatever success is, you need to develop a plan of action. And that's what I did. I developed a five-year plan of the things that I wanted to achieve. 
with actionable steps, steps. Because I am a little bit woo, yes, I do my meditation, but you've got to woo it and do it. That's not my term, that's somebody else's, but I loved it, I love it. After my five-year plan, you know, I may have mentioned that the holes in the socks, but you know what? There was a whole load of mess going on with the style. Stressed and a mess, total mess. So I evaluated my style and the way that I wanted to show up. But not only the way I looked and the way I dressed, but the way I walked, the way I talked, the way I showed up in person and online. Then the most important thing was my self-care. What were my habits and routines for self-care? Yes, I love an afternoon tea and a spa day, but what's more rewarding than giving yourself something once you've achieved something on your goals, one of your goals? And ticking off those bucket lists as you travel around the world for every new adventure. As I went through this transformational process, I began to show up as my more authentic self. And other people's thoughts no longer bothered me. I was being true to me. I was enough. And for those people that raised their hands earlier, you were enough too. You were a good enough mother, son, daughter, employee, business owner and friend. Now, I mentioned my father earlier. And in the last 21 years, since my son's been born, we got closer, we reconnected. I never expressed to him my feelings of abandonment that had affected my life. And earlier in 2023, he passed away. My half-siblings decided that they wanted to take his ashes back to the Caribbean. And I knew this was something that he would want us to do for him. That is where he would want to be buried. So I worked with them to put together his funeral and his burial. Four months ago to this very day, I was sat on my veranda in the Caribbean with the urn of my dad's ashes before me. I was writing his eulogy. And my siblings came to me with my dad's Bible. Inside the Bible was pictures of me that my dad had kept with him all along. I'd always been with him and I'd always been loved. I just never knew it. I said a few words to my siblings and then I retreated to my room. And you can imagine what I did. I broke down and I cried. It was so overwhelming, the joy and the sadness to know that I was finally enough. I'd finally found my enough. However, if I hadn't had the kindness to forgive my father on our last phone call before he passed away, if I hadn't had the kindness to my brothers and sisters to support them in my dad's funeral, and if I hadn't had kindness for myself to reduce my limiting beliefs, I would have never known that. So my one call to action to you, if you are at a crossroads in your life and you're ready to take a direction, if you want to slay those dragons that are in your mindset and those limiting beliefs, if you want to take that step to recovery, go find your good enough. Thank you.